Big Josh versus Black Bart. Um, right. Josh has been given one of those new WCW gimmicks you hear so much about <laughs> these days. <laughs> Uh, he is uh, a lumberjack. Yeah, um, he goes up against Black Bart. Black Bart must have thought, "Well, this is great. WCW doing all these gimmicks. Yeah, I've been doing this Black Bart gig since like the mid '80s. Mm. My time has come. Yeah, no, no. not the right gimmick. No, no. Not interested in your gimmick. <laughs> Only interested in new gimmicks. Um, there's a nice bit with Black Bart where he's coming down to the ring, and before he does, they they ring announce him. They jump yeah. from wherever he's from. Uh, Black Bart, and he's just standing there waiting for his cue. Yeah, and that's strangely courteous or a sort of out law character isn't it that, yeah, don't follow any rules you need to stay there until your name is said I will I will, <laughs> I will do, do that, that sir yeah. uh, with apologies um, comes from wherever the hell he likes yeah he's um, he's Black Bart not the same as Black Bart Simpson that's a no. different thing so that's um, a bad t-shirt you buy at the market yeah, and out comes Big Josh yes. uh, from the Pacific Northwest mm. comes out with a couple of buddies Pete he, he does if you're gonna bring two fucking great big actual bears <laughs> You better fucking use them. In you my, bet, in my I agree. He's right in the middle of them as well. He's happy. And I tell you what, I did I did look at those bears and it did, even though I know he was not killed by those bears. E- even though you know they have had at least 50 milligrams of Valium. At least. At least each. All I'll say is their ears were flattened right back, <laughs> right? And they could not stop looking at everything. <laughs> and that suggested to me a level of agitation, yep. stroke, anxiety, stroke, mm. anxiety anger yeah. that I did not feel comfortable with even though it was from 1991 yeah. and I know that that's not how Big Josh died I don't <laughs> I don't <laughs> like the fact that those bears might still exist <laughs> I know. and might be seeking personal revenge <laughs> well they're gonna have to dig down a fair way to get it on Big Josh <laughs> 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 But Black Bart's gonna be up on his gun, but I want to see these bears. I never seen two live bears come to wrestling match. It sounds like a rap group, two live bears. I hope they keep on that side of the ring, ladies and gentlemen. Gary Michael Capetta, he may like bears. Let's go back up to him. Gary Michael Capetta, he might like bears. They said. I hoped it was a inside yeah, right, gay joke. Yeah, it was not. It was I don't not, believe. Right, no, I don't yeah. think Jr. Well, understands what there. bears is. Yeah. If you ever get to meet Jr., bring that up and say, "Were you referring, were you referring to, to the, the, specific the movement? Yeah, 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 type of gay interest?" Mm. Uh, he will just. He'll ask you to leave. But, <laughs> but it'll be worth doing. It'll be worth doing. Look, Big Josh. You know, Big Josh. He would later be the first doink. Oh, right. He is a guy okay. called uh, Matt Osborne originally. Yes. He performed under the name Matt Bourne. Uh, his dad was tough Tony Bourne, who was uh, a very big star in the Pacific Northwest mm. sort of uh, wrestling area. His father's frequent tag team partner was a guy called uh, Lonnie Moondog Main. And Moondog Main was a very, very big regional star. He, he did a couple of bits on TV that, that are sort of legendary. He ate dog food and he once drank a live goldfish and then ate the glass it was in. I okay. mean, you know, Good traditional. Solid carny ca- stuff. Absolutely. Carny roots of wrestling. <laughs> Lonnie's eating glass. You know I've had it, Bass. I've had it. I'm going back to be the way I was. I'm going to kick a little bit of butt. You know what? He was the idol of the young Matt Bourne. He was unconventional in the ring, and he was a prankster in the locker room. Right. And for a young boy, that was a very, very exciting mix. Yeah. Uh, Bourne later said, I am admiring this guy who, he also happened to be an alcoholic too. He was a jokester. It had quite an effect on me. Maybe not all good, but he had a big bearing on just my outlook on life. Right. So Lonnie Moondog Main was a big boozer. And in fact, he would die in a car wreck in August 1978, just 33 years old. Right. But Matt Bourne had seen this, and the two things that he was sort of fascinated by were this unconventional way of working Mm. and booze. Um, He had substance abuse issues pretty much from the earliest days. The person who really got him hooked onto that fast living wrestling lifestyle uh, was Roddy Piper. Mm. Uh, He was a good friend of Piper, uh, Playboy Buddy Rose and Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig. And he said that the whole business back then was a party. He'd said, uh, uh, if you weren't a partier, you kind of got brushed to the side. So he is a famous wrestler's son. He goes into a territory where his dad was huge. He has a charmed existence. He moves to Mid-South Wrestling, where he again gets in a hot program with Ted DiBiossi, also a second-generation uh, star, who is having a feud with Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And this is the first time that Matt Bourne begins to 
have issues. And what happens here is an unbelievable story. Mm. So I read the article in Deadspin. I should give them a credit because mm. they put it all out in neat chronological order. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan was attacked by a fan in Mid-South during that big feud while he was making his way to the ring. And Bourne leapt to his defence. They were on the rival sides yeah. there. He broke kayfabe. Punched the fan so hard that the fan's eye popped out of his head. Ah. In the rough and tumble Mid-South, where promoter Bill Watts encouraged his wrestlers to get into bar fights to protect the sport's image, and he would fire them if they lost as well. Uh, this was cause for celebration. As Matt Bourne said, I'd knocked the guy out and I believe he'd lost his eye. I went back to the dressing room and everything was great. I was like a hero. <laughs> Bill Watts used me as an example. This is how you take care of the business. <laughs> but a lot of problems came out of that, yeah. he said. Um, Watts, the promoter of Mid-South, temporarily lost his licence. They had to fire Matt Bourne uh, to protect themselves from lawsuits. <laughs> he went to Georgia where he teamed up with uh, young Arn Anderson. They right. had a tag team together. Um, they were managed by Paul Ellering, who would later become the Road Warriors manager. Mm. And indeed, the Road Warriors would take the spot that Matt Bourne and Arn Anderson had in Georgia Championship Wrestling. And they would become huge stars. And they took that spot because Matt Bourne once again got involved in legal issues. There was always this sort of sense of people saying he had legal issues, so he had to leave. They are horribly serious. So he was done for statutory rape. Um, he had been involved with an underage girl who she was under the age of consent in Ohio. It was believed she was the daughter of a woman that he was supposed to be in a hotel room with on the road. It's a really, again, a murky thing. There's nothing harder than trying to find clear explanations of news stories that happened on a regional level that people wanted hidden yeah. in the pre-internet era. Yes, yes, so yes. he then went back to Portland, his natural home, where he was an untouchable star. He very quickly made it to the WWF. They had a good working relationship. Portland had been run by a guy called Don Owen, who was on very good terms with Vince McMahon's father. So there was an exchange of talent, and that led to Matt Bourne facing Ricky the Dragon Steamboat at the first WrestleMania, mm. uh, where he lost. Uh, he then goes to Texas, and then there are years that are just unaccounted for. Right. Wrestlers travelled, and wrestlers performed, and there were always fans, and there is always memorabilia, and there are always listings, and there were always people sending results to wrestling organisations. Matt Bourne disappears for nearly three years. Nobody knows what happened to him. No, no, uh, it's very worrying when you see he's a man who's had violence, alcohol, drugs, and these horrible statutory rape claims. Mm. So I don't know what happened in those three years. No. They're just missing. What happens just after those three years is he's in fucking WCW as Big Josh. Right. There is no clear path that he ended up there. It's he really, just appears. It's like really creepy. Knocked on the front door. Man. Can I come in? And he's dressed as a kid's favourite in yeah. a thing. This is a man who has knocked out someone's eye. This is a man who has substance abuse issues. And this is a man who's been charged with statutory rape. Yeah. Uh, here he is. Kiddie's favourite. Mm. He's got bears. Come and look at the bears. Come and look at the bears. Of course, within a year, he will be in the WWF. Uh, he will be Doink. The TV movie It came out. Uh, the Stephen King thing in 1990 and the WWE that was as quick as they would pick up on popular culture <laughs> so they they came up with the idea for Matt Bourne being given that um, he said when I started it the only two people in the entire industry that believed in that gimmick were Vince and myself uh, I had a lot of guys make a joke about it and nobody took it seriously mm. what he did really well with that was he added a sinister element to what seemed like a really basic cartoony gimmick and he added something that was a bit schizophrenic and a bit... The jokes were cruel. And it became a very, very good character. When you You're the only one laughing here. Clowns are supposed to be funny. Clowns are supposed to make children laugh. I don't see anybody laughing but you. <laughs> hey, isn't that what it's all about? I just love to come out to the arenas and look around and look at all the little kids' faces. They're all smiling. They're all jumping up and down. They're all wondering what Doink's going to do next. And I love to go up to them and play with them, give them little balloons, give them little tricks, do little tricks for them. And then, and then I like to look at them and their little smiles. And I like to just take those smiles right away. <laughs> Oh, that's despicable. Right, so when you look at it back now, what they did really well was he was a good wrestler, Matt Bourne. Yeah. And so when they would have him in the clown suit and he'd go to the ring, there was no sense that he couldn't wrestle. Mm. He would go in there and be frighteningly good at wrestling. <laughs> and that in itself was a bit unnerving. <laughs> Someone sort of said, you know, I think uh, they said he, he never felt like a children's act. 
it always felt like the darker side of that clowning thing. Mm. But also, when you hear his backstory, you go, oh, yeah. that, that, fuck that's me. I, I mean, you know, we talk about your John Wayne Gacy's. You yeah. talk about your John Wayne Gacy's. It sounds like <laughs> Stone Cold's 316 promo. Uh, but there is something which I think is legitimately creepy about that act, which I don't think even the WWE or Matt Bourne were aware of. And that's yeah. that, you know, he comes with a lot of baggage. Yeah. It is amazing that someone with those sorts of issues in their past could be featured on national TV. Uh, you know, it just it just yeah. seems inconceivable. Where is your fucking background check? Dirty Den. Yeah. Shot a block. Yeah. Taxi driver. Yeah. In Germany. Germany. Always worth stating the details because they are unforgettable. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt Bourne, had, he had a, a decent-ish career. It was truncated by substance abuse. Right. Uh, and then other people picked up the routine. Uh, Steve Kern, who had previously wrestled as Skinner, had been the second doink they introduced in WrestleMania 9 mm. as a sort of mirror image. And he had been pushing very hard, saying, we should do a tag team. And Matt Bourne was like, why? Because I am a dark and sinister and clever, malevolent clown. You're just a clown. I don't, I don't you know, wh- why, why are you tag team? And he's like, well, I can do the clown thing. It's like, it's not about the clown thing. When you hear stuff like that, you go, what is going on here? You know, <laughs> what do you think what you is, are? Cr- it's creepy. Yeah, so he gets fired and then uh, uh, Steve Kern does become the next doink, as mm. does Steve Lombardi, the former Brooklyn brawler, and a guy called Ray Apollo. But what the character becomes then is it just becomes the thing that you would expect. You lose all of the darkness. Mm. Matt Bourne took the darkness and carried on running with it. Mm. So he also said actually at WrestleMania 9 that he was originally supposed to be wrestling Hulk Hogan because the character had got over so big right? Uh, and that Hogan had nixed it saying I'm not coming back to wrestle a clown <laughs> that seems to be bullshit that seems, that seems it, like an exaggeration it seems very unlikely He again when you know that the whole time he was there he had substance abuse issues everyone said he was really miserable to be around they, yeah. they no one liked he was referred internally as Krusty the Clown because he was just right. such a grumpy shit um, he was also famous for being a bit unnecessarily tough with job guys and, and people starting out right. he would take advantage of them in the ring bit mm. and so there's some, there's a real horrible cloud over this guy yeah. just creepy when he leaves he ends up going to ecw now at the time he was the antithesis of what ecw was about he was a wwf character and he was a clown and what he did really well is he appeared basically going i have been destroyed by this gimmick and the wwe mm. and it had cost him his mind and so he'd turn up half made up and it would all be street like he'd spent the night just in the street outside mm. the outfit would be ripped he looked like he stank he you know he'd have a fag in his mouth you know while he was doing his thing all of it was really gross and he began to refer to himself as born again playing off his his real name he was like a mentally unstable doink which is the more so frightening (laughs) i can't tell you he lasted less than a year in ecw as well and he was fired because he had serious uh, personal problems again it was substance abuse to be fired from the ECW locker room at this period mm. for having a drug problem was it's unheard of. Too many I drugs. Mean, that is too many drugs. That is all the drugs. That's all of the drugs. <laughs> Bali dangerously, and everybody in the ECW said, this is no circus. <laughs> no circus, it isn't. <laughs> but I can clown around, and I can still kick your ass. <laughs> He's been had a couple of arrests in the late nineties for vandalism and harassment and criminal mischief. Mm. All these sorts of words that have a big umbrella for just your general chaotic life. Um, he had his parole revoked in uh, nineteen ninety nine from an old charge when he was found to be positive for cocaine and he was just sent to jail. Mm. So um, on his release, he did keep wrestling on indie shows, usually as Doink, and he took on a job just drilling limestone. Real two words that mm. you, you don't really want to have to say when people say, "What do you?" Do as a job at drill limestone. Well, apologies to all the limestone drillers <laughs> out there who sounds like a tough spend fucking a bit of job. money on the piss. <laughs> a tough job. Um, in 2010, he had a really odd thing where he had a shoot wrestling match that turned sour with Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Wow. Where the two of them were just in a high school gym and they came out to do the match and there was a sense before they came out of personal animosity. And at one point, Jim Duggan just no-sold a nut shot and then it all just fell to shit. Right. Axel literally ran and got his two-by-four. Doink, <laughs> just got a chair. And then they paced each other for ages. Hacksaw's getting a little... Uh, in the ropes. He's in the ropes. The referee should be in there. All right, gentlemen. The referee should... Wow. Three, let's step in there. Let's go. You want to work? You want... Huh? Make your move this. Get him, funny man! Wanna work? Wanna fight? Wanna work? Keep 
Uh, there's been various <laughs> things have come out each way. Bourne had said that Duggan held a grudge against him for the incident where the fan lost the eye. Right. Uh, he also said that Duggan was drunk and had become very angry when they tried to take his blood pressure backstage. It's always <laughs> other people's faults with Doink. It's never <laughs> Doink's fault. His last match would end up being against Tommy Dreamer and uh, he died in June 2013. Mm. Uh, he was 55 years old. He was found collapsed in his girlfriend's apartment. Um, he had an accidental overdose of morphine and hydrocodone. Um, he was not popular by the time he died. I found a, a little post on the UK fan forum, which was from the year he died. Mm. Someone summed it up just saying, drug addict, sex offender who nobody liked, who played a clown in his spare time, doesn't get overwhelming sympathy. Strange. Yes, um, Chris Masters, who was a fairly big wrestler at the time because he'd had a WWE stint, he did a tweet that I summed up the whole thing. He wrote, So, the original doink passed away. Can't say I'm surprised. Saw him a week ago and he looked like he was ready to check out. R.I.P. Oh, dear. <laughs> he That's la- not a good little... He, no, he later had message. to uh, uh, add a little one. Okay, tweet deleted. Sorry for offending <laughs> a lot of you I'm just calling it as I saw it I was worried he didn't look well last week (laughs) R.I.P. Matt Osborne Um, um, it's worth saying actually that falls and rises of the business most people in a career will manage to hit one rise even if there's a fall Mm. the only person who didn't manage to do that at any point by the way is Matt Osborne who this one fact about him which I love so much he is unique in wrestling Matt Bourne in that he just missed the big money runs in Charlotte Atlanta Dallas WCW in 1990 and the Attitude Era nice he was always that close and missed them which is just what he sounds like a fucking horrible man Um, there's some Japanese photographers at ringside they don't know what to make of this right it's a load of old shit and he does his, his big move here is he, he does earthquake splash which mm. only works if you're earthquake because you're big and when it's just a little eye losing sex offender <laughs> leaping onto your chest mm. it lacks something of the visual appeal i mean it's there is there is something about the doink story that i find i keep coming back to again and again mm. and it is because it's everything that an evil clown is supposed to be yeah is actually what the man who is playing that is. is yeah it's just mm. gross and frightening hiding in plain sight <laughs> well i mean i wouldn't say plain sight it's just no. a clown no oh yeah so good point yeah good point <laughs> i wonder if he was secretly relieved when loads of other people pretended to be doink yeah where oh, he just that thought, is plausible deniability isn't it that's it that's, is yeah, yes. no, is my girlfriend's house honestly oh 600 clowns which is it <laughs> <laughs> well you're the one with the fucking tag on your ankle <laughs> yeah i'd forgotten about that you're going back to prison that's a violation of parole if you turn on a flower wouldn't it squirt your water in your mouth it's got to acid at a policeman. <laughs> I used to be doink. You think that's why? It's not, it's piss. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky oh, Dozan, the cops. Ricky Dozan. Uh, look, hey, that no. was an uplifting and fun episode. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible little cunt. <laughs> Wrestle me, Pete. Wrestle me, Pete. <laughs>